Hey guys, how are you? So today I'm here, very happy, talking about the diversity visa lottery and we are going to have all the questions answered with regard to the host of the DV lottery winner. Because I've been seeing so many questions. People want to know, who is the host? Is the host the same as the, what you call sponsor or the person feeling their level of support? How do I go ahead and get a host? I do not know any person in America. How can I get a host in America? But what if I don't have the host now? I'll be looking the host later. Can I use a fake address at the moment while I'm waiting to find a host? And then when I get the host, I'll be able to change. Ask the KCC to unlock and then change. Or is it possible to use the address of someone? I agree with, but I'm not going to stay at their house. Then I'll go to find another apartment. Once I arrive in America, I'll go to live in another place. There are so many questions. How long can I stay at the host? Oh, who is the good, who is a good host? What qualifies one person to be a good host? So you see, there are so many questions with regard to the host. You are in the right place where you can be able to get full answers about the diversity, diversity visa lottery host. Welcome everyone. You know, this is Ernest Bonifaz Makulilo EBM. And if today is your first time to come across to this particular channel, you know, you are in the right place. Let's get it. Okay, let me start. When you win the diversity visa lottery, you will be required to fill the DSC 260. That is the immigrant visa form. It's quite different from the form which many people use it, DS-160 for non-immigrant visa. So when you are filling the DS-260 as a green card lottery winner, you will be asking one place to put the address where you will be staying in the United States of America. That address must be a residential address. You cannot put the business address. You cannot put a PO box. You cannot put the address maybe for Walmart or any other business. It has to be a residential, a home address. Someone lives there. That's what we're referring to as the host. What are the immigration requirements for someone to be a host? For the diversity visa, the host is any person legally in the United States who will be able to give you a place to stay. There is no immigration requirement that the person must be a U.S. citizen or a person must be a green card, I mean, green card holder to be someone to give you a place to stay. A host can be the address of a, someone in the United States as a temporary work visa, can be an international student or any other person as long here is legally and has a place to over there regardless whether it is five bedroom whether it's one bedroom it doesn't matter they are not going to ask the number of bedrooms but we usually ask you when you are going to find this person do a little bit of background check not everybody in America even if has a intention of helping you depending on their background might be able to positively or negatively affect you let's say you get the name or the address of someone as a host that is the most wanted person in the united states of america is a drug dealer for instance so you might be in trouble but all in all is not a problem you have to find a residential address so host is any person giving you a place to stay that is a different from a person feeling the affidavit of support. I will talk about that a little bit later. But a host is the address. You can ask a person to be your host. But not everybody can be able to get a host. It's a challenge. For people who will be helping them to fill the DSC 260, as I said, I will be having a service for 250 the service to help you to review your qualifications, to fill the DSC 260, to help you with the process of 
uh, reviewing your documentations, to prepare you for the interview, to give you a, pro a personalized blueprint guide on how to start the life and succeed in America. All those kind of situations. And if you don't have the host, I'll give you my address, though you are not going to stay at my house. If the caddy comes here, I'll be able to send it to you wherever you are going to stay in America. So you can use my address if you are part of my process. Then if you are going to live in Missouri or any other state, that is up to you. But you have to have an address. How do you get a host? There are different ways. Some people have relatives. Some people have friends already. Some people don't know anyone. I usually tell people, so if you don't know anyone, there are different tricks or ways you can get a host. One, you can try to, let's say, go to Facebook groups. There are groups for Kenyans. There are groups for Ugandans. There are groups for Tanzanians. There are groups for people from Ghana, whatever. Go to those groups, introduce yourself, write in a professional way that I'm so-and-so from this country, I won the Green Card Lottery, I'm looking for someone to host me, blah, 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 blah. That would be one of the ways to find. If you are Muslim, you can find Muslim associations. You can be able to start with that one. Sometimes, uh, you can try to get someone like, uh, if you are Christian, you find that church, whatever. Or you can just find people you know someone who lives in america maybe went through the facebook you just try try to ask some questions if they say no it's no there are different ways you can be able to start with in those particular ways and sometimes you can find someone say no you are not coming to stay here for free you will come here you will pay a certain amount there are those people who do that there are those kind of ways. There are some people that will tell you, you can come here and stay for my house for one week, then you find your own place. There are some people that say, you can, can come here, you will stay for a month, you will pay me 500, you will pay me $1,000 for a month, whatever it is. But usually I will tell you, once you find a host, try to have good conversation. Try to have what we call expectation. What do you expect? What will be the relationship between the two? Why am I saying that way? I've seen so many people, they have bad experience. Or they come with a lot of expectation that my host will be knowing a lot of information like EBM. You think that your host will be able to find, oh, this website can get you a job. This is how you are going to start, whatever. No, not everybody knows most of the things. The person you ask for place to stay, you didn't ask it to be your immigration consultant. You didn't ask the person, whatever. So unless otherwise, the person is knowledgeable, it's your responsibility to ask the person. But if there is a money involved, like, are you going to contribute for the bills? Are you going to contribute for the rent? Are you going to do whatever? It's better to know in advance. Those are important things. I'm planning to have this year, before December possible, to start hosting services. So people who are winning, I do not know how much exactly, but I'll be finding a place where people will be coming to stay there and will be able to be give the guide and they'll be able to pay. I do not know, maybe it'll be 700, 1,000, 1,500. I don't know exactly the amount at the moment until we finalize some of the uh, rental places and the situations where we'll be able to do that. So, overall, that is the host. You can find a place, you can find a person who will be able to do that. But remember, if you say, I'm going to use your address, someone, uh, be careful. You have to trust that person. Because remember, the social security card, the green card, actual green card, will be sent to that address. Even if you arrive in the American, you change the address immediately, sometimes they will send it to the original address in the DSC 260. So if you don't change, I mean, you do not know the person, don't trust the person, someone might use your identity. They, you give the social, you give the card, they can become you. So you have to be careful, at least the people who you can be able to know and the LGBT trust them, you can be able to do that. So that is how you can get the host. There are some of the countries, some of the embassies require someone to fill the affidavit of support. Affidavit of support is the form. There are two types of affidavit. There are one different from uh for people who are already in the US, and there are some people who are outside, whatever. So we are talking about the affidavit support where uh, someone in the US is going to feel to 
support someone coming to the United States. But remember, after left of support, not all embassies around the world require that. Some of the embassies they require, some are not. If the embassy or embassy requires, obviously you have to know in advance. So if you ask someone to be your host, don't expect that person to be someone who is going to fill your DSC 260. Those are two things different. A host is just someone who is giving you a place to stay. And it can be a green card holder. Can it be a US citizen? Can it be an international student? Can it be someone with a temporary work visa? It's okay. But a, someone who is going to feel the affirmative support is a person who is a US citizen or a green card holder with a certain amount of income above the poverty guideline. You see that one? And someone who's going to feel the affirmative support sometimes is required to submit the tax transcript that is going to sponsor you will be in charge will be responsible in case of certain things financial go not don't go well so those are the things you need to know so you can get someone a even if it's a US or greek card holder can be your host and you can have someone else to be someone in the dsc to, i mean they have to support so I don't want you to confuse the two that, oh, this person promised me to host me, but that's not to give me the affirmative support. I've received so many information because when you go to ask someone, you ask someone to be your host. And then in the down the road, the person doesn't know about the affirmative support. So, you know, the host must give me the affirmative support form. The person, no, I didn't agree with that one. And you are going to, uh, I've received so many emails or oh, the person changed their mind. No. The agreement was to host you, not to feed the affirmative support. So if you want affirmative support, you have to talk with the person. They have to understand. Not everybody knows this immigration information. Not everybody knows this immigration complications about your affirmative support, about whatever. the tax. Because remember, the taxi transcript has a social security number of someone. So people are not going to randomly give to you. So you have to agree with someone first. So that is something you need to understand on that one. Then, to have a good host, as I said, depends on your agreement, expectation. Someone can say, oh, you can come to stay at my house, but that person is the thing that if you come to stay at my house, you'll help to babysit my children. But he didn't tell you that. And then you, you come there, you become disappointed for them. Oh, you are not going to help, to, to, to help with my kids. But you, you are coming to find a job. Oh, you come here, you expect the host to be the one. Oh, you find a job, go online, go to Indeed. This is how we write a resume. That's your expectation. But that you didn't ask for that. You asked for a place to sleep. So you needed to talk with someone so that you can be in the same page. Even if that person is your relative, it's better to understand one another because sometimes maybe you, you lived in Africa together, but there are so many years, so many things have changed between then and now, someone in the different situation. So those are the things you need to be able to be aware. In my opinion, if you are not having a relative and someone is having a paid service, not me, any person has a paid service, I'll be happy to use a paid service because I know this is a business transaction. The person is going to agree, like, okay, I'll be I'll be able to help this person will help me to find a job, will help me to do get, get one, two, three, four. I'll be staying here. This is my expectation. Then going later to have disappointment. Remember, as I've been saying, to come to America is one thing as a developer winner. To succeed is a different story. Because if you come here, you spend randomly playing around will go five years, ten years with your green card and it will not help you anything. But if you have a proper guidance, I trust me, within two or three years you are someone else. You might be able to have a mortgage, you might be able to start a business while you are working. You can be able to be well established, reach your dreams or rather go beyond the American dreams. So once you come here, don't just assume, but just because of green card is the surest guarantee. No, there are hard work you have to put. There are steps, there are things you need to understand in order to be, to be able to go around. So those are some of the important things about host. 
But how long should you stay at that host? That's depend. You need to have that discussion. Is expecting to stay one month, two months, three months, to stay one year. That's a good thing to have. It helps. I've hosted some people. I'm the one who is usually like, oh, you come to stay out. If it's for free, it's for payment, we talk about it. If it's, we are going to stay for one year, six months, one week, one day, we are going to discuss. So usually that is something you need to have that discussion. It will help you to have a very good relationship. I don't like to see, in my opinion, someone you have been living, hosting together, and then after a month, you are going to start a YouTube channel. Oh, my host was bad. D didn't he show me this? I didn't do this one. Yes, I might not be doing that. Maybe because you didn't discuss those kind of things. So it is better to be on the same page. I don't like to see bad experience for people, especially who are brand new, you do not know anyone and how you can be able to start your life here in America. So, all the best for those who are winners. Congratulations. If you are not the winner, I'm sorry to hear that. But remember, this is not the end of the world. Get ready. Prepare applications for the next individual applications. That's number one. Number two, you have to look for other ways to come to America, other ways to go to Europe, legal ways. There are education, visiting, conference, internships, volunteering, so forth and so forth. There are so many other ways. So don't confine yourself, you are all life on one item, the lottery only. How you can improve your professional profile. Those are the things you need to pay attention to for this the lottery. There are life beyond green card lottery. 